Wow, thank you so much. Um, today is the beginning of Advent, a time of hope, a time of waiting, a time of preparing. And um, time of preparing, I, it was brought to my attention, we need to make sure we have something prepared. And, and John, where are you at? What do we have to have prepared? Ah, the gifts prepared for next Sunday for who? CCLM. So there's a tree in the hallway that has angels on it, and you go ahead and take it off, make sure you pick your stuff up, bring it here, we need it next Sunday. You'll be delivering it right after service, and um, between us and the school... Just kind of kudos to us in the school. Um, I guess I was told that I think we're doing about 100? 100 children. Yeah, so thank you to Doreen and anybody else and everybody else involved. And all you folks that give of your time, time shopping, trust me, trying to go somewhere and shop is not easy this time of year. I'd rather pay and have it delivered to my house. Yeah. Well, there you go. The guide dog will get me in. So this is time to stir up your power and come. The psalmist plea in eight, in eighty, Psalm eighty, verse two, has become familiar to us in this Advent prayers. Isaiah wants God to rip the heavens open. Both cry out for an apparent distant, angry God to show up, to save, and to restore. When we hear Jesus describing the coming of the Son of Man with stars falling from heaven, it can sound dire and troubling and horrible. Not like anything we'd ever hoped for. But when we really look at the suffering of people God loves, we can share the hope that God would tear open the heaven and come. And I'm going to add, come with his everlasting mercy and grace. Now for uh, the Kresge family is going to come up and light our candle of hope. If you want to just play a little something while they're walking up. is special because it is the beginning of a new season. We call this season Advent. What does that mean? Advent is a word that means to come. It is a time when we get ready, preparing ourselves for the coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus came when he was born on Christmas Day. What are some things that we might do to get ready? We can get our house ready by thinking about him. What we are doing right now around our Advent wreath is a way of preparing for Christmas. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Today we light one candle. The traditional color for Advent is purple, which it refers to the coming of the royal king, Jesus Christ. Purple is also a deep color that symbolizes spiritual darkness outside the light of Christ. The fourth candle is the candle of hope.
light the first candle, I hit this candle to remember us that we wait with hope for the day when we celebrate again the birth of Jesus. We hope that everyone will come on, I mean, come to know God and worship God. You know, I, I love the clapping because we really, it's a time of us celebrating everything from our little ones to our older ones and in between their participation and part in our worship. It's a blessing. And so why not clap it and rejoice over it? Let us stand for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sins. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, self-centeredness that makes us reluctant to work against oppression. We are implicit in system and exploration. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear the words of insurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with a robe of righteousness. In tenderness, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant, God's faithfulness is eternal, and God's blessings rest upon all. Amen. Amen. Let us remain uh, standing as we sing, Hark, a thrilling voice is sounding. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You may be seated. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the 
peace above and for salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the hosts of the whole world and the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here as worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us stand for the prayer of the day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come by your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. 
We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Our next reading is from Psalm 80. Please join me in reading responsibly. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You are enthroned upon the cherubim. Shine forth. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that may we may be saved. You have fed them with bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O God, God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, beginning in chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Too many pieces of paper here. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the power, powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven, of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as it has branches, its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Okay, hold on a sec. Do you guys know when he's coming back? Okay, good, because I don't either. 
But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to keep uh, to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at the cock crow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep, and when he comes suddenly, and what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, open our hearts, our souls, and our minds, and may your word speak to us. Amen. Yeah, faith explorers, head on out. That's the first time someone only remembered because she said something. Um, Paul spent about a year and a half with those in Corinth, and it was a very wealthy city, but also had a very derogatory term. I've shared it before. I'm going to swear in church. You guys ready? You ready? Corinthicize. Oh, you were. You were worrying there, weren't you? You see, back in those times, to say for you to say to somebody, you have the character of one who lives in Corinth, I, that's bad. Yet, this is the place that Paul goes and spends a year and a half in Corinth. And you know that city's still around, right? I don't think it has the same reputation. I think Las Vegas took it over. (laughs) What happens in Las Vegas does what? Amen. Okay. So, this is the individuals he's dealing with. And 99, gosh, I I almost want to even put up about 99% of the reasons any of the New Testament is written is because there's difficulties. I know I always love when people say, if we can just get back to the way early church did it. God bless you. I think we're doing it today. All right? Um, So this whole letter is, is almost like a letter of just saying, get your act together. Stop messing around. Wake up. Now, I don't know how you are with your children or individuals at work. You know, you always, we always tend to remember the bad, right? You know, when somebody says something about us, we don't always remember the good things. You know, you're excellent at this, and you're really good at greeting people. You're a nice person. Now, if you can just be here in time to do it, that'd be great. Now, out of all that, what are you going to remember? The negative one. So Paul really wants to put something right in front of him. And I think that's pretty amazing that he wants them to have their focus not necessarily on themselves, but on a faithful one. So he starts off this, every time I'm thinking of you, I think of you often. Doesn't that sound pretty endearing for somebody that's about ready to chastise them? All right. I thank God for your lives of free and open access to God, given by Jesus. Now, mind you, Paul was a Pharisee, and he did not think the message at one time would be for the Gentile. Heaven's sakes, not even for the Corinthian. But here he's thanking God for them. He goes on to say, there is no end to what has happened in you. 
It's beyond speech. It's beyond knowledge. The evidence of Christ has been clearly verified in your lives. Okay, they don't have things down perfect, do they? But Paul is already saying, look, there's things happening and I'm seeing them. Even though there's difficulties to be dealt with still. Just think, he goes, you don't need a thing. You got it all. What does that mean? Just think, you don't need a thing, you got it all. He goes, all of God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the finale. We're going to get back to that. And not only that, but God himself is right alongside keeping you steadfast. Okay, who's keeping them on track? Themselves? God is. God is being faithful. God is the active one here. We always want to say, get your act together, right? But it's God here who's being active. And he's reminding them You know, you can focus on yourself. It ain't going to get you anywhere. Focus on the fact that God is there alongside of you. To keep you steady and on track until all wrapped up by Jesus. God, who got you started in the spiritual adventure, I like that, spiritual journey or adventure, shares with us the life of his son, our Lord Jesus. And then check this out. God will never give up on you. Never forget you. In spite of all the difficulties and everything, God's faithful to them. God's not rejecting them. But I like to go back to this. When he goes, just think, you don't need a thing, you got it all. All God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expectantly for our Lord. I have a problem. It's a bad problem. It's an addiction. And I constantly confess my addiction to either uh, Lou or Kevin. They're both percussionists. I'm addicted to symbols. Do you know what symbols are? They're the bright, shiny things. And I'll tell you right now, drummers enjoy their drums. But there's two things they get absolutely addicted to. They're snare drums and they're cymbals. And they're always looking for the perfect snare drum. I was talking with Kevin this morning. He goes, you, you see the guy with his kit... And then you see this wall of snare drums behind him. In my my closet, you'd see a row of cymbals. I probably have at least 10 jazz cymbals, okay? I'm always looking for the right one and looking for the right crash even. And so we had this gig, um, a jazz gathering at La Mesa Wine uh, about, what what was that, last three weeks ago. And I purchased the perfect crash. I'm not going to talk about how much it costs. Thank God I get to take it back, okay? And so I put it up there, and I hit it, and I, when we were playing, and you don't really know what a cymbal really sounds like until you play it with the band. And the minute I hit the cymbal and did that with the band, I'm like, oh no, it's going off there. And right there in my bag is Old Faithful. It's a Sabian symbol, a 16-inch, I've had for 24 years. Right there in front of me. And I take that, and I put that up there, and I'll tell you what, it was the best, it was the perfect, it was the right symbol for the gig. Was it not? There you go. i got to hear that more often. <sighs> But it's right there in front of me. I have it. 
That's all I needed was that one symbol. Besides my other rides I used, but you know, we won't get into that. As a church, sometimes we're always looking, aren't we? We're looking for the new and greatest thing. We're either looking for the new and greatest program. We're looking for the new and greatest ministry we could do. We're looking at all these different things. Even the new improved pastor. I don't blame you, okay? Maybe you do need to look. But you see, the thing is, we don't realize what's in front of us. Like, I talked about a few weeks back. I said, we have a mission right in front of us. It's that school. It's that school. We can volunteer. We can go over and read. We can support. You want your hands out in this community? You got it right there. You want to advertise the church? You can do it by attraction rather than promotion. Help out there. You're doing these... (sighs) You guys amaze me at what all you do. But think about this for a moment. A lot of these things are right in front of us. A lot of these beautiful things are right beside us. You see, you don't realize sometimes the ministry that you're already doing. I mean, I do have to talk about Tony. If I don't go to service without talking about Tony, that guy lets me know when something's happening, okay? If you want a secret, don't tell Tony, okay? No, he's not like that. But the thing is, he keeps me on top of things. He'll tell me, so-and-so's in the hospital, so-and-so's going here. That guy is out and about doing ministry. Is he an ordained pastor? I'm starting to wonder. You know? Because he's out there doing. Thanks, Tony, for all you do. And I want to thank all of you. Because the ministry that you're doing with one another is not complicated. You already have it all right there in front of you. Right in front of you. You have prime timers. That's unbelievable. It's kind of funny now I get to go to it, 50 and older. Boy, time flies, right? We are all so blessed, um, but we don't always notice it. Um, a great movie I tend to watch a lot during Christmas time. I love the soundtrack. I don't know if you've seen it. It's called Love the Coopers. Love the Coopers. And uh, John Goodman plays the dad. And then then, um, a bunch of other great characters in there. And a character named Bucky, he's just kind of watching everything amongst this dysfunctional family going on. But amongst this dysfunctional family, there's love for one another. And sometimes they don't always get it right. I don't know. You guys don't always get it right, nor did the Corinthians. I don't always get it right. But at the end of the movie, I know Dan's going to give it all away. It's fine because you're still going to watch it and enjoy it and watch it over and over again. There they are. Bucky just had a heart attack. They're in the hospital. They're in a waiting area, and... A Bob Dylan song comes on, and they're all dancing to it with each other. They let go of all their animosity, everything between each other, and just enjoy the moment. And Bucky comes in with the orderly, and he says to the orderly, he says this, We all make such a fuss when everything we want is in front of us the whole time. We all make such a fuss when everything we want is in front of us the whole time. Let's stop fussing and start, maybe be awake a little bit more and see what's already in front of us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for being in front of us. A faithful God who loves us no matter what. 
Even when we fail, you're always there. You're always faithful. Thank you. All this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share the peace of one another.
kind of share in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again, soon to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the church. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Call your church into holy fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Re-energize your faithful people to live with hope and compassion, especially those who serve as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God, all creation signals your presence, O oh God, the vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, and living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Merciful God, let the nations tremble at your holy presence, that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict, teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems, and bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Merciful God, enrich the spirits of those who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief, especially those we name silently in our hearts or out loud at this time. Deliver all in any need. Merciful God, be with those who keep awake at night, nurses working overnight shifts, caregivers of newborns and aging adults, stargazers, those who are anxious or those who are traveling. Reveal to all that the dark can be a place of calm and comfort, filled with your presence. Merciful God, Good and gracious God, you invite us to recognize and reverence your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Enable us to see the reality of racism and free us to challenge and uproot it from our society, our world, and ourselves. Merciful God. Holy God, as you have accompanied your people through times of captivity, wilderness, and exile, Shelter and sustain all those who flee persecution, oppression, warfare, violence, hunger, and poverty. Open our hearts and homes, our gates and doors, so that they find safety, peace, and welcome, a place to live in freedom without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our refuge and our hope. Merciful God, we pray also for peace among nations and people, for safe return of hostages, and for protection for migrants, in lament over acts of violence fueled by hate, prejudice, and fear, especially in Burlington, Vermont, for areas of the nation facing winter storms, especially in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York, in thanksgiving for successful rescue operations following the tunnel collapse in northern India, for victims of political violence in Sierra Leone, for those injured and killed in a South African mine elevator accident, and for their loved ones, for pastors, deacons, musicians, and all church leaders preparing for Advent, and for the congregations they serve. Merciful God, you have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and place, calling them into one fellowship of saints. 
Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence. Merciful God, listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you that give of your time, your talent, your treasures to help us here at Hope Lutheran to do the ministry we do. Thank you. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of your bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks for the Lord our God. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
singing the whole choir. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you.
generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal and sent out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now for announcements, Karen. Okay, I'm going to be quick. Um, don't forget to pick up those angels. There's only a few left, so we want them all picked up by the end of today so we can uh, make sure all those kids at CCLM are served. And one other announcement. What's happening after worship today? Yay! Congregational meeting, budget meeting. And I also heard there's going to be a little surprise in the fellowship hall, so you got to go in there and find out what the surprise is. But I'll see you all at the budget meeting after this. We'll start, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes after service gets done. It'll be in the fellowship hall. Thanks. Let us stand and receive the blessing. The God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Three, four.
Go in peace, and guess what? Keep awake. Thanks be to God. <laughs> <laughs>